Hello, my name is Daniel MacDonald and this is my sign name in Auslan. It is this because it represents a kangaroo hopping. I would like to welcome you today to Gadigal country. You are here today for a very special event, the National Arts and Disability Awards. Wow, what an amazing accomplishment for you to be here. I would like to pay my respect to the elders, past, present and emerging. This awards day for you all is for you to be proud of yourself, to show who you are. It doesn't matter who you are or where you come from. The important thing is that you are here and I am deadly proud of you. This time for the awards is for all of you. It doesn't matter if you win or not, but you should be proud of yourself. I would like to thank you and welcome you to Gadigal Country. Thank you. Hello everyone. On behalf of Arts Access Australia and the Australia Council for the Arts, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to the 2020 National Arts and Disability Awards. My name is Liz Martin and as Deputy Chair of Arts Access Australia, I'm delighted to be your host for this very special event. Firstly, thank you to Daniel McDonald for that warm welcome to country. Daniel is a representative from the Metropolitan Land, Local Aboriginal Land Council here in Sydney and we are honoured that he welcomed us to his country this afternoon. It's a privilege to host this award ceremony on Gadigal land, and I pay my respect to elders past, present and emerging. I warmly acknowledge all of the traditional custodians of the many lands from which our audience are joining us today. I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. People who have sung their songs, danced their dances and told their stories on these lands for thousands of years across many generations and continue to do so. Our show is being audio described, so for anyone wanting to access the dedicated audio feed, jump across to Arts Access Australia's YouTube channel right now. You also have our fabulous Auslan interpreters here, Bettina and Elisa from Sweeney, as well as the live captioning across the bottom of the screen. We come together on International Day of People with Disability to celebrate the achievements of an extraordinary trio of Australians. The Australia Council and Arts Access Australia are delighted to partner again in presenting this event in just its second year. During the course of the show, the artistry and leadership of each of our 2020 award recipients will be revealed. We'll also be hearing a little from each of the 2019 recipients, who many of you tuning in today would remember from the inaugural National Arts and Disability Awards during Meeting Place last year. Of course, we all know the challenges 2020 has presented us with, but it has also presented opportunities. With so many events moving to be online, the awareness of the accessibility of events has been accelerated exposing previous and some still current barriers. Last year, this was a gorgeous, intimate show held at the National Portrait Gallery of Australia. This year, we are still gathering together and celebrating our wonderful artists with as many people as we can across the country and internationally, though in a slightly different format. For those of you who have downloaded the Eventcast app, we'd love to hear from you. Click on the Discuss icon on the app and let's cheer each other on. You can send us your comments, congratulate our recipients and let us know where you're joining from. We want to make sure we hear from everyone. So if you're using a screen reader and are therefore unable to use the app, you can participate in the conversation by sending your congratulations and comments in via the email adstream at australiacouncil.gov.au. That's A-D-S-T-R-E-A-M at Australia Council 
www.gov.au. And so, onwards. Joining me first is the CEO of Arts Access Australia, Matthew Hall. Welcome, Matthew. Thanks, Liz. This is my first time as part of this great celebration, so I'm really pleased to be here with you all. Matthew, first of our recognitions is the Arts Access Australia National Leadership Award. Can you tell us a little more about this? Liz, Arts Access Australia established this award in 2019. It's designed to recognise, support and celebrate new and emerging deaf and disabled leaders in the arts and disability sector. The winner receives $10,000 to develop their leadership skills and potential in whichever way the recipient identifies will provide them the best support and opportunities. This might be professional development training, support services, office setup, business technology, travel and accommodation, portfolio development, or something else entirely. In addition to that cash, we seek to identify other ways in which we can facilitate other benefits or opportunities, such as work placements, coaching or mentoring, residency on our board or one of AAA's member organisations, participation in meeting place, or showcasing the recipient's leadership journey across the sector. Why is the award important? Liz, our National Leadership Award is a critical part of Art Access Australia's strategy to develop leadership skills in our community, to help drive change and to increase agency in the arts sector for artists and arts workers who are deaf or disabled. Whilst AAA is facing a number of significant, indeed existential, challenges at this pivotal time in our history, including in relation to funding, the AAA board recognises that the award is an important tool to drive continued change and one that we had to ensure remained in place this year. Why do we need a leadership award for deaf and disabled artists and arts workers? Liz, this award is needed because if we are to see more diversity in the arts, if we are to see more opportunities for artists with disability, if we are to have, as a community, agency in the decisions and actions that affect us, if we are to have a vibrant, sustainable arts and cultural sector that is fully inclusive and accessible, then we need more people with disability in positions of leadership and influence. And we need that to happen both within the arts sector and our society more generally. In 2019, a research report by Ernst & Young on behalf of Hashtag Valuable, a disability campaign group, clearly demonstrated what I think we already knew from our own experiences. Firstly, that while leadership teams increasingly embrace challenges of gender and ethnic diversity, disability is absent. And secondly, that visibility of senior leaders with disability increases the prevalence of discussions about disability inclusion. There needs to be many more and different voices for disability inclusion to drive sector and community social change. This award has an important role in developing those voices and helping them to be heard. The award recognises and celebrates the achievements of a single individual who has clearly demonstrated to the judging panel an understanding of the issues and challenges faced by artists and arts workers with, who are deaf or disabled and a clear, well-articulated personal leadership philosophy and ambition. The award also provides significant opportunities for the individual recipient to develop, to develop skills, grow networks and be exposed to new opportunities. All of those things in and of themselves are important and worthy and are things that none of us should be reluctant to give if we are able. However, this award does much more than delivering these benefits to a single individual in our community. It builds capacity, helps create stronger and better agency and helps drive change in attitudes in organisations and in our society. And Liz, that's why it's needed. Matthew, thank you. It's great to get your thoughts, but it's not goodbye. It's time to kick off the awards. I'm ready.
People with disability are less likely to be found in leadership and management roles in all sectors of our society, including the arts. This must change. And as the peak national body for arts and disability, Arts Access Australia believes we have a role to play in creating the opportunities for this to happen. We gather here on International Day of People with Disability to announce the recipient of the 2020 Arts Access Australia National Leadership Award. Now you're probably wondering about this beautiful piece sitting next to me. It's our trophy that our recipient will receive. The trophy is a tactile textile sculpture called Emu by Daniel Kim. Daniel is a young disabled artist from New South Wales. Daniel finds joy in and communicates that joy in his own sense of presence through his art. The piece was highly commended by the judges in the 2018 Seed Stitch Contemporary Textile Awards. And the piece is shown off to great effect on a bespoke stand that draws a connection between the emu and the Australian landscape and incorporates both braille and text. This beautiful stand was designed and made by Sydney artist Philip Patterson. Let's now cross to our 2019 recipient, Madeline Little. Madeline, welcome. Hello, thank you for having me. It's our pleasure. Madeline, would, would you like to share with us the highlights of your leadership journey after winning the award last year? Absolutely. Um, well, my career has progressed quite rapidly. I'm very thankful for the professional development opportunities from learning Auslan to my negotiation and leadership principles courses. And of course, the recognition that the award provided. I was fortunate enough to be named the festival director for Undercover Artist Festival. And I recognize that the award played a big part in strengthening my skills and my profile to help make that happen. Well, there's certainly been some great highlights. Now, how will you continue to develop your leadership skills and pursue your leadership ambitions within the arts and disability community and more broadly in 2021 and beyond? Well, most importantly, to the absolute best of my ability, I will continue to do whatever I can in my role as festival director and as a theatre maker to create meaningful and career advancing opportunities for deaf and disabled artists in collaboration and consultation with the community so that my leadership is always informed by us. And I'll continue to advocate and hold space in the non-disabled mainstream for our community to step into as well. Thanks so much for your time, Madeline. It's great to hear how your year has been since receiving this award and I look forward to seeing your career and your leadership ambitions continue to progress. Thank you, Matthew. The judging panel had their work cut out for them in selecting this year's recipient. The number and calibre of the applicants this year demonstrates that we have plenty of talented, capable and dedicated people who are stepping up to lead in our community in many varied ways. I also want to record my thanks to the hard work and commitment of each of the members of our judging panel. Belinda Locke, AAA Chair, Carolyn Bowditch, CEO of Arts Access Victoria, and Paul Calcott, National Training and Resource Development Manager of First Peoples Disability Network Australia. I am delighted to now announce their decision. The 2020 Arts Access Australia National Leadership Award goes to Abby Madden. The recipient of the 2020 Arts Access Australia National Leadership Award is Abby Madden. Abby Madden is the founder and artistic director of inclusive dance and circus company Blindful. Abby is a dancer, performer and choreographer. She has been a member of the Australian Dance Theatre's Youth Ensemble, worked with Belfast comedy dance theatre company Pony Dance, and is a founding member of the highly successful Yuck Circus. Abby considers community arts the home of professional artists. 
she believes that focusing on accessibility and inclusion at the grassroots, where most people interact with the arts, will normalise accessibility and increase representation of deaf and disabled professional artists. In receiving this award, Abby will lead by example as she works to take Blindful to new artists, new stages and new audiences. Please join us in congratulating the recipient of the 2020 Arts Access Australia National Leadership Award, Abby Madden. Unfortunately, Abby is unable to join us as she is on location for a new movie filming in the Flinders Ranges. However, I was lucky enough to be able to be the one to tell Abby about her win and she has sent me this short message. Thank you so much for selecting me as the recipient of the National Leadership Award for 2020. I'm very disappointed that I'm not able to join Arts Access Australia, the Australia Council for the Arts, and everybody tuning in to the very first virtual National Arts and Disability Awards event. At the last minute, I was offered a job, my first job of the year, thanks to COVID-19, on a film being shot in the South Australian outback. With almost non-existent internet access, I had to make the difficult decision to forego participating in person. I really wish that I could have been there joining in on celebrating the International Day of People with Disability with you all. I am honoured and humbled to be selected as this year's National Leadership Award. I haven't been able to wipe the smile off my face since I heard the news. I am so excited for where this will take me and incredibly grateful to Arts Access Australia for selecting me and providing this unique opportunity. I'm a great believer in the importance and the power of the arts at the grassroots in local communities where everyday people interact with, engage in and benefit from the arts. I'm very interested in ensuring that I harness the many benefits that this award will bring me to become better at leading by example at that grassroots level, to create the greatest reach possible for and normalise access for and inclusion of artists and audiences with disability. Congratulations, Abby. What an outstanding achievement. Many are sending through their excitement via our app. It's so nice to see these comments on our discussion ticker on the right-hand side of the program. Belinda Locke says, Happy International Day of People with Disability, everyone. Great to be celebrating deaf and disabled artists and leader today. We have people on Facebook tuning in from Bunjalong Country, Minjin Bidalog Country and Gadigal Land. One comment saying, congratulations to all the fabulous artists and the team behind the awards. Please keep your wonderful messages coming. It is my pleasure to introduce the Minister for Communications, Cyber Safety and the Arts, Honourable Paul Fletcher, MP. I'm Paul Fletcher, Commonwealth Minister for the Arts, and I'm very pleased to be joining this live streamed event for the National Arts and Disability Awards. Of course, COVID makes it very hard for us to come together to do a live event. But last year, when I had the chance to go to the Sun Awards, I was very struck by the commitment, the passion, the energy of the artists and performers who were nominated. People who had certainly not let a disability interfere with their artistic practice. And people who, in a number of instances, were using their artistic work to help Australians without a disability get just a little bit of an insight into what having a disability means 
as you go about your daily life. So it is important that we hold these awards to mark the contribution to Australia's vibrant and flourishing arts scene of artists, performers, creators who have a disability. And I know that everybody who's been nominated tonight has worked for many years to do what they do, to build up their skills, to build up their expertise, uh, and to share their creative talents with so many others. Good luck to all of the nominees, and thank you for what you do. Thank you, Minister. Please join me now in welcoming Australia Council for the Arts CEO, Adrian Collette. Thank you, Liz. It's a joy to be here. Now, Adrian, this is the second year that you are hosting these awards. How did they come about? Um, our research, really, Liz, confirmed for us the importance of agency and ownership for artists with disability, the need for visible role models and success stories, which are vital to creating pathways for other artists with disability. In 2018, my colleague and former CEO of the Australia Council, Tony Grabowski, announced the Australia Council uh, would fund up to the tune of $750,000 over three years to support artists with a disability. Each year, we are supporting two national awards celebrating the achievements of artists with disability. So today, I am thrilled to announce this year's recipients of the Australia Council National Arts and Disability Award for an emerging artist and one for an established artist. And the Australia Council also has committed to supporting artists develop their artistic practice. Can you tell us a little more about that? Yes, uh, Liz, we are, we are supporting structured mentorships really to support artists with disabilities to develop their artistic practice through either a practice-based project or career development opportunity. Now, after one of the most challenging years, we have had bushfires, floods, a pandemic, the Me Too movement and Black Lives Matter call to action, all supported, assisted, and with a recovery often led by artists. What do you think it is about Australian artists, and particularly artists with disability, that makes us unique, resilient, and integral to survival in these times? It's been incredible to see, really, the spirited response from artists to the many challenges of this year, whether springing into action to raise money for the bushfires themselves, uh, the relief efforts of finding new ways to engage audiences after lockdown. It's been kind of an irrepressible response, really. I, I think we have much to learn from this time, and through it all, artists with disability have created powerful works. Our arts really do reflect us. They tell our collective and individual stories, inspire cultural understanding and exchange. And if artists can't do this, then who on earth can? Today, we celebrate these artists who tell powerful and evocative stories, influential work that benefits our community in so many ways and reminds us why we invest in and champion the arts. Thanks, Adrian. It's time for you to announce the Australia Council Awards. My very great pleasure, thank you. The presentation of our National Arts and Disability Award for an emerging artist responds to Council's research which highlights the importance of celebrating and acknowledging the achievements of artists at a relatively early stage in their career development. This year's Emerging Artist Award is supported by a generous donation from Christine Simpson-Stokes. Thank you, Christine, for your ongoing support. The award recipients for both the Australia Council Awards today were identified through an open peer nomination process. The Council received an overwhelming response from the sector to the awards and the depth of the nomination fields to both categories was truly extraordinary. In 2019, the inaugural award went to the artist Dion Beasley. Now, Dion can't join us today. However, we can see here what he's been up to this year.
irre the rest the irrepressible Dion. Uh, by the way, Dion's plan is still to go to South Africa when the world opens up again. So stay tuned for the South African version, perhaps, of his cheeky dogs. It is now my great pleasure to announce the 2020 recipient of the Australia Council's National Arts and Disability Award for an emerging artist. Congratulations, Emily Crockford. The recipient of the 2020 National Arts and Disability Award for an Emerging Artist is Emily Crockford. Emily Crockford thinks big. You can see Emily's boundless heart and energy in all she does. As well as her style, flair and love of animals. Her work is vibrant and welcoming. It is large in life, scale and colour. Her broad creative practice encompasses painting, textiles and soft sculpture. And can be seen in large scale across Sydney and in high profile institutions. Emily is a Studio A artist. Her professional success paves pathways for work by artists with disability to be visible and valued, particularly those with intellectual disability. Awarded high profile public art commissions, winning awards for her art and featuring in many exhibitions and galleries, Emily takes on each new challenge with passion to produce impressive and arresting works. Emily was also an Archibald Prize finalist in 2020. Ultimately, Emily wants to make people happy through her art and she certainly succeeds in this endeavour. Congratulations, Emily Crockford, recipient of the 2020 National Arts and Disability Award for an Emerging Artist. Welcome, Emily, and congratulations on your achievement. <laughs> Emily, it's such a pleasure to announce you as the 2020 recipient of this award. Tell me how you feel. I feel happy. I'm excited. And my daddy will be so happy for me, and he's so proud of me in my heart. That's wonderful, Emily. It's been such a big year for you, you being at the Art Gallery of New South Wales. Your work is being exhibited as a finalist in the Archibald exhibition. There's that gorgeous mural behind you. And of course, you've been working with your fellow artists at Studio A. Can you tell me what painting you're working on now? I'm working on, I, I did a painting of me and Rosie, it was my and I did um, I, my next project I'm going to do next. I do what I ask for for next year. That's so wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful to hear, Emily. Thank you so much yeah. for joining us. And I'm good to meet you. I'm really proud of myself. And I like my baby Tofi. But good to me. We're proud of you too, Emily. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I'm really happy and in love heights. Maybe I'm going to do a photo of you next. <laughs> I'm feel happy and I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm happy. Congratulations, Emily. And there's lots of love for Abby and Emily on our digital chatter. Stacey Baldwin says, congratulations to all award recipients from the team at Access to Arts. Annette Twyman says, a big shout out from the National Portrait Gallery with great excitement about your awards today. And Murray Saylor says, congratulations to all finalists and awards winners. Walter Kadiki is one of Australia's leading deaf poets. 
In 2018, the Australia Council funded Walter to take his practice overseas and develop his career in the US. Since then, he was performed at the 2019 Victorian Premier, Premier's Gala Dinner and this year's Red Dirt Poetry Festival. We have Walter's work, Plod Along Is What I Must, to share with you all today. The poem explores living in a mostly hearing-dominated society and meditates on perseverance. It's a stunning work and I can't wait to share it with you. Amazing work by Walter Kadiki. Adrian, back to you now to present the final awards, the Australia Council's National Arts and Disability Award for an established artist. This award celebrates the achievements of an Australian artist whose outstanding and sustained contribution to their chosen field or fields of arts practice has been recognised nationally and indeed internationally. Now, before we announce our 2020 awardee, let's see what our 2019 recipient has been up to and cross to Janice Florence in Melbourne. Janice, hello. Hello, thank you. It's great to see this award being celebrated again even under such circumstances of the year we've all had as artists. Uh, I think the award has immense value in raising the profile of disability arts and now lifting our spirits to have a bit of celebration after the year we've had. Uh, I would love to see this award and its recipients widely recognised in the arts and in the media. My dream is that one day we will see as much attention given to disability arts as it is to disability sport. I think there's just as much passion and prowess and commitment among disability artists. That's wonderful to hear, Janice, and it's a dream we would love to make, make true by supporting your work. So who would have imagined this year when you and I spoke this year? It was unimaginable. Uh, but yeah. coming out of lockdown, 
What are you most looking forward to doing, particularly with Weave Theatre? Well, like everybody else, we've discovered Zoom and we've been rehearsing and um, sharing workshops. We've had a work that's been in development for a long time, over 2019. And because of the pandemic, we've had to postpone the performance season, the staged uh, performance season, four times now. So we're hoping um, in April this year to finally stage that work and we've had to sort of creatively mould and shape it a bit to fit in with the world, the change world that we live in. Um, and we're very much hoping to stage it in April at the meat market in Melbourne. So um, also because of a resilience grant from the Australia Council, we have some new digital possibilities in um, 2021. So yeah, a lot to look forward to and uh, a lot of changes in the way we work, but it's been some really interesting discoveries and hopefully uh, through all this digital change, our work can spread to more people. Um, I'd also really like to congratulate the 2020 recipients and so well deserved the people who have received the award this year. Thank you, Janice. It's wonderful to catch up again, albeit remotely, but we hope to see you in person very, very soon. Thanks so much. All the best. Thank you. It's now my great pleasure to announce the 2020 recipient for an established artist. This award is one of the most prestigious in the Australia Council's suite of awards. Our winner is an incredibly worthy proponent, and I'm absolutely delighted to announce the award goes to Gail Mellis. The recipient of the 2020 National Arts and Disability Award for an Established Artist is Gail Mellis. For more than 30 years, Gail has made an outstanding and sustained contribution to the vibrancy of Australian arts. Gail's work traverses theatre, dance, circus, opera, disability arts, visual arts, installation, digital engagement and more. Gail has received numerous awards throughout her career. As one of Australia's most critical cultural thinkers, Gail is a respected role model who continues to make significant cross-generational impact in the arts and disability sector. Her award-winning designs have toured Australia, the United Kingdom, Europe, Asia, New Zealand and the United States to critical acclaim. Her outstanding and sustained contributions as a designer, maker, disability advocate and arts manager have also received significant national and international recognition. Gail's value to Australian arts is immense and irreplaceable. Admired and deeply respected both locally and internationally as an artist and advocate of the highest calibre, it is a pleasure to celebrate Gail's achievements at these awards. Congratulations, Gail Mellis, recipient of the 2020 National Arts and Disability Award for an established artist. Gail, warm congratulations and welcome. Um, hi, Adrian. I have to say you've got a very proud and excited disabled artist here today. <laughs> I'm, I'm completely delighted to hear it. Gail, you've had such an illustrious career, if I can put it that way. We'd be delighted if you would like to say a few words about what receiving this award means to you. Uh, thanks, Adrian. Um, Firstly, I feel very honoured receiving this accolade today on the land of the Ghana people. And I would like to say that I respect the Ghana people's 
cultural, spiritual, physical, and emotional connection to their land, waters, and community. And I pay my respects to their elders past, present, and emerging. A huge thanks to the Australia Council for these awards and their ongoing commitment towards improving inclusivity um, for deserve diverse artists and um, their stories. There are so many people I'd like to thank um, and I can't thank you all um, today, but in particular in accepting this award, I would like to thank Fiona Toomey, Gail Sobrick, Ingrid Varent, Gary Stewart and Jenny Seeley, MBE. I would like, also like to thank my wonderful family and all my fabulous colleagues, including um, Janice Florence and Maddie Little. Um, you know, I've had the pleasure to collaborate with many fabulous people where I've got, and I've had the opportunity to laugh with them, get fired up about things and make art. And that's both here in South Australia, nationally and internationally. You all know who you are, and I would not be here today without you. You've all impacted my career and the way I work and who I am today. But without doubt, receiving this award is definitely the highlight of my career because um, I'm receiving this from peers. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Gail, for those very warm and encouraging words. Um, our research actually does highlight that there are still many barriers and disparities which exist for people with a disability in so many areas. And I know you feel very strongly about this. So within all the positive things surrounding this award, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this subject. Well, um, Adrian, you acknowledge it's something I'm very passionate about. And um, uh, yeah, I've got, I could talk about this forever. But I just want to say that stories affect how we live our lives, how we see other people, how we think about ourselves and how other people see us. And to be a deaf or disabled person is to exist in a society where our images and identities are created by beliefs, values, myths, assumptions and stereotypes by non-disabled people. Deaf and disabled people must be the producers of our own images and the storytellers of our own lives. And our stories must be told. So I implore everyone that work within the arts and cultural sector and industries in this country to work together with deaf and disabled people to end the in inequality that people face. And this is urgent. Um, so, yeah, I just want to put that out there to everybody so we can make the change together. Thanks, no, thank Adrian. You. No, thank you. One of, one of the reasons we thought it was worth establishing such an award for an established artist like you is because of the influence you have, the way you nurture artists, younger artists who are emerging. Do you feel that as a real responsibility now at this stage in your very, very uh, uh, illustrious career? Uh, Adrian, absolutely, and it's sort of part of my DNA and it's part of my journey and pathway. Um, I really didn't want to see um, emerging artists spend their time and energy um, fighting to be seen and heard, and it very much encouraged me to come out very publicly and strongly with my um, disabled identity. And I really want to see those emerging artists, whatever age they may be, I want to see the vivacious thoughts and energy um, going into making artwork. And so anything I can do to support emerging artists, I do and I encourage other people. And I see it a lot, particularly, you know, with informal mentorships. Um, and the reason I feel strongly about this too is because diversity is more than social justice. And I think it can get easily um, sat there in that, um, but audience actually want to see authenticity and they want to see um, diversity. And disability is diversity. Um, and there are incredible young artists that will continue to flourish 
um, if the right people and organisations around them uh, keep providing opportunities and allow for different ways of working and thinking and celebrating all deaf and disabled people for what we bring to Australia's um, uh, cultural landscape. And sorry, I know I can talk on and on and on, but I just wanted to add a little bit more to that because um, I, I actually want to talk to emerging artists. So to deaf, deaf and disabled people who are pursuing a career in the arts, there are a couple of things I would like to share. First one is not everyone has to be an artist. We are desperately needing deaf and disabled people as arts workers, managers, producers, technicians. So I really strongly urge you to explore where your passion actually is because you may not, you may find, even though you love the arts, being an artist isn't really where your passion lies. The careers in arts and culture are not easy. Arts and culture tells us about our humanity, but it requires so much of our being to work in this sector. So I really encourage all deaf and disabled artists and arts workers and, and to support one another and to su particularly support emerging arts and artists and arts workers. And the other thing I want to say to emerging artists is tell your stories your way. Don't imp emulate what's happened before, particularly the Western canon. I encourage you to use your access requirements to stretch form and tell new stories that need to be heard. And I support you 100% percent. Um, thanks, Adrian. Thank you, Gail. Thank you for your wonderful mm. work. Thank you also for your bold advocacy and congratulations again. Thanks, Adrian. A huge achievement, Gail. A lot of love for Walter Kidiki coming through in our digital chatter. Walter himself says, amazing work, Emily. Guy Morgan says, well done all nominees and congratulations to all winners. Delighted to be amongst the audience for the second year running. Inclusion is the key and the best way forward in the arts and all society. And Leanne Buckskin says, congratulations to all nominees and recipients. I'm so thrilled to celebrate this day with you. The comments you've, that you've been reading are absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Liz. Now, we're almost at the conclusion of this year's National Arts and Disability Awards, but not quite. We have one more treat in store. Liz Martin, you are an amazing wearer of many hats, not just a fabulous MC, but perhaps better known as a musician. We are delighted that you've agreed to take us out today with a song. Uh, it's, uh, we're so honoured to be able to play here today and celebrate. This song that we're going to play is actually all about, um, I guess it's a protest song. I guess it's about um, change and doing it in our own way, being unique in our voices and, and, and allowing ourselves that um, individuality to uh, really make for change and celebrate. So I hope you enjoy it. Well, the band is ready for you, so why don't you join them and, um, as we wrap up the show? Thank you. Well, what a pleasure for the Australia Council to again partner with Arts Access Australia to present the 2020 National Arts and Disability Awards. This is an extremely important signature event for us. I feel that the challenges of this year have thrown up opportunities as well, not least of which has been to offer events such as this one online so that even people, so that more people can come together and engage and celebrate and share a collective pride in our nation's artists. Thank you, Matthew, to you and your team for all the collaborative work that has gone into producing today's event. I couldn't agree more, Adrian. I'm delighted that the sector has been able to come together in this way on the International Day of People with Disability. Thank you to everyone who has tuned in to our first digital National Arts and Disability Award. On behalf of both Arts Access Australia and the Australia Council, sincere thanks to Imogen Yang, who has been audio describing the whole show over on our YouTube channel, and to our interpreters, Bettina and Alyssa from Sweeney's Interpreting. Most importantly, a massive congratulations to the artists we have honoured today. I'm sure we will all continue to follow their careers with great interest 
and collective support. And now to conclude the National Arts and Disability Awards for 2020, over to the Liz Martin Trio with their song, Dance a Little, Live a Little. <laughs> For the world, let's build a little ladder. Let's stand up, raise a little banner. For your heart, we can dance a little stranger. In the dark, we can wave a little louder. Cause time is running. Dance a little stream. 